Hey there, Capricorn. Welcome to your reading for the next 20 years. Yes, believe it or not, we are going to do a 20-year reading. Why? Because we have Pluto going into Aquarius. These are meant to be the broad energies that you will be working with right now. I never thought it would be so, you know, so many people have already left so many crazy comments about these readings. I'm I, There's no conspiracy here. This is just for fun. So don't take it too seriously. And also, these are broad energies because of Pluto and Aquarius. That's why it says 20 years. So I don't care if you're going to die tomorrow. Today, you're going to be dealing with this energy because uh, Pluto goes into Aquarius in March. <laughs> and it might as well be there right now because Pluto moves very, very slowly. And, you know, it's on the cusp of Capricorn and Aquarius. So again, this is meant to just represent the broad energies that you could be dealing with, some things that could come up. And these are things you're going to be dealing with right now. I think some people are taking this as like 20-year predictions or, or something like that. I don't know. I never thought this would be such a such a crazy thing. Or I don't even know what the word I'm looking for is Capricorn, but <laughs> whatever. I have to finish them. So I'm going to go all the way through all the signs, right? But you have this Nightingale spirit says love is all around. Definitely could be attracting love into your life at this time. You have the four of wands and the king of cups. I would say at the beginning of Pluto and Aquarius, we have a lot of really good love energy for the next few years in general. So if it's something that you're looking for, I would definitely say like the, um, you know, the next uh, few years could be very, very good for love if you want it. And if you don't want love, I would say for the entirety of Pluto and Aquarius, I would be following your heart. Literally, I've been saying this for two years. Like the one thing I would be focusing on is like, what does your heart tell you to do in every sing single situation that you get into could be like for business or work or whatever you even end with this chalice card which says rejuvenation and fulfillment but it kind of looks like the ace of cups and so what i would say is that pluto and aquarius is really about following your heart the problem is is like you know our environment might not be conducive <laughs> to following our heart so you know i think it's kind of like not really a challenge it's just something we have to do the other thing i love about this card is it kind of says that you're much more capable than you realize in in all areas of life normally or I should say I have another um, animal deck where the nightingale is sitting on this gigantic egg and it's like a tiny little bird on the card. And it kind of says like that there's more inside of you than you realize. Like you're much more capable of accomplishing some of the things that you want to accomplish at this time. But maybe you're going to have to dig deep or maybe you're going to have to like kind of, um, you know, go for these things basically. Uh, you have the four wands here. It's card of uh, freedom. It's of course a card of marriage, but some of you, <laughs> some of you could be thinking about love just in general. I mean, you go down to this five wands. You're like, do I, like what kind of conflicts do I want? Do I want to experience the conflicts that come with love? You know, I think you have a lot of questions here about love in general with this energy. So you might be like kind of going back and forth is how I see that. I think as we clarify, we'll get some more answers. Uh, but you do have the two of pentacles. So again, you know, kind of like going back and forth, wondering like, what do I want? It wouldn't surprise me, uh, Capricorn, if you decided to have like an unconventional relationship, like together, but separate, you know, like where you're with a person, but maybe you don't um, live with them, right? Maybe you stay separate and maybe it works. That works for some people. Uh, maybe it doesn't work for you though. So again, <laughs> again, what I would say is follow your heart and do what your heart is telling you to do. Again, the other way to look at this is maybe you want something traditional, quote unquote traditional. Maybe you want a traditional marriage um, or maybe you don't, but whatever you want. Again, it doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is what you want. And I, that's what I try to, you know, that's what I try to get a point, you know, get across about Pluto and Aquarius is that there's going to be a lot of opinions. There's going to be a lot of people on the, you think it's bad now. <laughs> I think we're going to see a lot of people telling everyone what the right way to live is. The on, there's only one right way to live, and it's your way, right? And um, I would also be careful of people who tell you how to live. We have also, you know, we have uh, Neptune moving into Aries in 2026, at the end of 2025, kind of, um, really. And mm, I don't know. I'm not a big fan of it. Uh, I don't think it's going to be bad. I, I just think that we could see a lot of people telling us how to live, or people could be kind of coming out of the woodwork to tell you how to live. And again, as long as you are following your heart, then you will be free and you will also be very successful. So only live life according to Capricorn is what this is basically saying to me. So uh, let's see here uh, with the four of wands, you have the 10 of cups, uh, fortune after difficulty, happiness. I'm, I'm telling you good things coming in for you. And again, if you want love, it looks really good. And some of you could be worried, like, you know, if I have this person come into my life, is it going to invite, um, chaos or conflict or challenge. But I don't see that. You have the five ones, which is like conflict and competition. Um, but again, some of you, I feel it's like worth the risk or it will be. 
With the Two of Pentacles, Page of Pentacles, definitely could be a new person coming in for you. I see your finances going through some pretty big changes here as well. Probably right at the beginning of this Pluto and Aquarius energy. Again, I want to stress, I, I, like I, I, you'd think I committed a crime against humanity by doing these videos for whatever reason. But what I would say is that this is meant for the entire 20 years. And, you know, for this entire amount of energy, I think there's going to be a lot of new ways that people could be making money. But you're going you're gonna to have to take advantage of these new ways. You're going to have to embrace these new um opportunities to maybe get new jobs or new positions. But I also see that you could definitely be one of the signs that's really increasing your abundance. You literally have the abundance card next. With the King of Cups, you have the tower here. See, I would be careful of basing your, you know, love situations based off of past love situations here. You know, you could be having some thoughts about a past love situation, or you could be kind of having some negative thoughts because of a past love situation. And what I would say is, Again, if you want love, then I would make sure that you think about the new, not the old. <laughs> and I think you just need to realize that a past situation was a, was kind of like a fluke. Uh, if you don't want love, I feel like this is something about the home here. I'm actually going to pull another card to see. Can we clarify, like, what is this detail about the home? You have the Seven of Pentacles. Yeah, that makes sense to me because I've been saying to you for a long time that if I were you, Capricorn, I basically am. It's like I would be looking for those opportunities where there's a win, 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 win. <laughs> maybe you could move somewhere, for example, that is cheaper, bigger, better, and maybe get a job that pays you more money. But, uh, you know, again, maybe it co the cost of living is way less. You know, I, I see that Capricorn, you are like the only sign that gets this message. And Seven of Pentacles is, is the juice worth the squeeze? Or can you get more juice from the squeeze? And I would just be looking for any of those opportunities. Again, even if you're a billionaire, I don't care. I would be looking for any situation in your life where you can get more juice for the energy that you put in, right? It's about being efficient is really what it is. Uh, next, you have this fish card. It says abundance and luck on it. I do feel there's a lot of abundance and luck. We we basically know where this is coming from, which is right here, the net of wands. <laughs> um, you know, again, uh, I, I think that this is pretty much the whole point of Pluto and Aquarius is being spontaneous, uh, looking for new opportunities, innovative ways to build things as well, but also kind of like exploring mysteries. You know, Aquarian people tend to be interested in like mysteries or mysterious things, right? Or, you know, they're eccentric. So it's like, are there... You know, are there ways that you could do your job in a different way? Could you start a business in a different way? And, you know, again, there really is no, you know, I want to stress that there is no good answer because we have to go on this journey to, to find the answer in the first place. But any new ideas, you know, I've been, this is true for everyone because of Pluto and Aquarius. I would be just looking for new opportunities. You have the devil here as well. I kind of feel like this is you coming up in a very strong position. Obviously, this row kind of represents abundance and luck. So I feel like there is a lot of abundance and luck coming in for you here. I also feel like you need to, again, be careful of toxic situations. Uh, like I've said to other people as well, it's like, I think we're going to be living, it's almost like we're living in two different worlds. You know, there could be one world that tells us one thing, another world that tells us another thing. And we just have to kind of move closer to the world that we want. So again, I would follow your heart at this time. You have the Knight of Swords as well, very mental, logical energy. So, <laughs> you know, Aquarius, obviously. So, a lot of you could be tapping into your more logical side is what I'm getting. I definitely wouldn't rush uh, with this energy into anything. Um, the other thing I would say is no going back to the past in any area of your life. You know, the Knight of Swords can be one of those energies, especially with the Five of Swords right next to it. Um, you can see here, he's going towards the Ten of Cups and the Four of Wands. Uh, I think we need to embrace the new and not get stuck in the old. Um, there could be certain things that we don't that we don't want to let go of, right? There, and I think that's, again, part of the lesson of Pluto and Aquarius. And this is also why it's important that I'm doing these 20-year readings. If you get this now, then you won't have to deal with it for the entire 20 years. That's the whole point of me doing this, right? And what I would say here is that there are certain things that maybe that we kind of maybe think that we don't want or that we won't like. You know, I, I keep using the example of like the car, like when the car was first invented, people, like there were people that fought to have cars not be on the road. <laughs> and now you'd think that's crazy. Well, actually, no, it's not. We're like, we seem to be going backwards. But you know, what I would say here is there might be certain things that are happening where they could be like new technologies, new opportunities. And maybe you're like, I don't want this to happen, but maybe there's actually an opportunity. So I would be like opportunity focused. I wouldn't be too worried about certain things. With the Knight of Swords, you have the Four of Pentacles holding on too tightly to the past. Again, we are upgrading, ascending. 
I think that there are, you know, again, people um, bring up things that they don't like seeing. And again, there are, uh, don't get me wrong, there are definitely going to be things that, um, you know, that the government or whatever tries to push that probably isn't going to be a good idea. But at the same time, you know, I think we need to kind of be more, if we're opportunity focused, then we'll see the opportunity. With the devil, you have the three of swords. Yes, there is a, something that needs to be cut out of your life. It could be a toxic person. Uh, could just be, you know, toxic habits, things like that. I have been encouraging people to kind of like focus on, you know, uh, getting rid of things that are, steal your energy. With the Nine of Wands, you have the Five of Cups. I don't know. If for some of you, again, I would be careful of anyone who is coming back with regrets. I feel like you're moving on towards the future. I don't know. This. I don't know why this is so important in this reading, but it does keep uh, coming up here. The other thing I would say is that, again, it, this kind of fits in with what I said with that Knight of Swords. You know, normally the guy is crying over his spilt three cups, but there's two cups behind him that lead to a bridge and a castle. So I would definitely say like no stinking thinking at this time. I would keep it positive because there might be certain, you know, new things that come in. You might be grieving the loss of something. And because you're so focused on the loss, you're not seeing the gain. And I would be more, again, gain focused or kind of focused on the good, you know, opportunities that could be coming in. Uh, next, you have this balance all the dimensions of your life. You have this home card that says invest in home business or make money from home. So I, I kind of like that. I feel like there could be a lot of success for you uh, if you do happen to work from the home. There could be more opportunity for you to create more balance. And remember I said at the beginning of the reading, there was something about the home that I was getting. And here you go. <laughs> you have this home card. So your home could be very important. I do feel with Pluto and Aquarius that our environment, not like just the world environment, I'm talking about our personal environment, the things that are around us is going to be very important. It's like the creating an environment of success, for example, is going to be very important. So anything you can do to create more success in your life would be a good idea or, or more of an environment of success. You have the Five of Swords, the Death card, and the Five of Wands here. Again, some of you, there's like some sort of collect, can, like um, uh, some sort of energy of not wanting to make a change here, or, you know, there's some sort of conflicted energy. I feel very conflicted in this row, and it's probably in regards to a change that you are thinking about making here with the Death card. Uh, again, like I said, I would definitely embrace change if I were you. I know that it can be scary sometimes, but you know the whole entire reading seems to be having like a major focus on this. I also feel that there could be more of a freedom, more freedom actually through something that makes you feel restricted. And this could be like some sort of change that is like setting you free. It's interesting that you have the Knight of Wands with the Five of Wands. I call the Five of Wands Indiana Jones. To me, it's like a card of going on some sort of crazy adventure to... Um, find some treasure. You know, if you've seen the Indiana Jones movies, he goes through these crazy temples to find treasure. And so I feel like there could be like some treasure or success available to you, but it's going to be through an adventure. And this has come up for other people as well. So it does seem to be kind of like more collect on the collective side of things that if we explore new ideas, we're going to be very successful. Let's see. With the Five of Swords, you have the Three of Wands. Yeah, see, I, I think some of you, by the way, in love, I feel like some of you have all the answers you need going this way. It's like there could have been a tower moment in your love life, which it does seem to be coming up in your readings quite frequently uh, over the you know the past few readings that I've done. So, you know, I feel like it's time for you to get out there and to expand into the world. I also feel that this is more broad. You know, I feel like this is saying it is time for you to expand into the world. <laughs> I would be looking for more expansive opportunities, you know, especially with Pluto and Aquarius. I think this could be very good for you, plus some other things that are going on. Not only that, you know, this year, I'm, I'm shooting this video in 2022 or sorry, 2023, I keep forgetting what year it is. And in 2023, midway through, uh, Jupiter's gonna go into Taurus and that is gonna be very good for you. And then officially Jupiter will enter into Taurus um, at the end of the year, basically, or I should say, you know, in 2024. And so, you know, even though it's in Taurus, it doesn't matter, it's gonna benefit you significantly. So I would be taking advantage of this energy of Jupiter going into Taurus. I would start now. Again, I like to remind people that you know, astrology is not a hard stop, a hard start. You know what I mean? That it's kind of like a spectrum and there's flow to it, right? So you might be feeling that expansive energy now. So anything that's bigger than you, remember what we talked about with that nightingale spirit, I would be looking for things that maybe are a little bit scary. 
uh, you know, opportunities that we're talking about that maybe require a little bit of a stretch or a little bit extra elbow grease. Those are going to be the places where you're going to grow the most. And again, you're not waiting 20 years for this. Like I've said to everybody else, <laughs> this is something where you can take advantage of it right now. With the death card, you have the Ten of Swords. Something has to be let go of. Again, I really feel it could be a person that you're letting go of here. Again, some of you, uh, take it how it resonates. And obviously, this isn't going to be for all of you. But uh, for some of you, I do get the feeling that either you went through like a difficult breakup with the person you thought you would marry or something like that. And I feel this is saying like, don't allow that, don't bring this into the beautiful new energy that you could be experiencing. For others, it could be like the death of, you know, like I said, just leaving a comfort zone because you're having to let go of the old ways, right? With the five of wands, you have the net of cups. Definitely could be a knight in shining armor coming in for you, but the knight of cups is also a dream. He's normally looking into that cup and he is scrying, he's imagining his future life. But he's standing in the desert and he has water flowing in front of him. And as I always say with this card, it's like a card of needing to plant seeds in front of that desert, needing to, in, I mean, in front of the water, because even though he's in the desert, those seeds will grow. And so I feel for a lot of you, it is encouraging you to do something big. Again, I'm wondering, it's almost like as if I get full energy here for you, where it's like the only thing that matters is this, is, is like something that you're about to get started on. I feel for the person that I'm talking to here, Capricorn, it's like your full energy. It's like you're standing at the edge of a cliff. It's not really a cliff. It's like uh, you're standing in front of a big opportunity, but you're wondering, I think the thoughts that are coming into my head are like, is it going to be worth it? Am I going to put a bunch of work into this new opportunity and it's going to fall flat on its face? And what the reading is saying to me is like, hell no. What you are standing in front of this, this maybe this mountain is a better example. It could be a new mountain. It's going to set you up for the next 20 years. Again, the whole point of this, uh, doing these readings as well, is again, we have Uranus and Taurus for the next couple of years until the end of 2025, which I believe is all about, is trying to get people to focus on building and leaving a legacy, which is, you know, doing something much bigger than yourself. And your reading is definitely focused on that. Uh, you have this chalice card. It says rejuvenation and fulfillment. Um, I feel you need more of this in your life. <laughs> uh, if you're working too hard, I feel like you need to play. I think you need to do some things that you enjoy doing. I do feel you need to do more things that fulfill you, uh, create happiness, joy, you know, all those things in your life. And again, I would do this through the act of listening to your heart, what your heart tells you to do. You have the Queen of Swords, the Ten of Wands, and the Ten of Swords. You know, sometimes I think we get so used to life being hard that we get so used to life being difficult that we feel like that's life. And, you know, there's no doubt about it. Life is not meant to be easy. But I also feel that there are many, many things that we do that make our life overcomplicated. I think there are things we can do to greatly improve our life. I'm a living example. Again, not saying this to brag, but I was like miserable for three and a half years of my life. Trust me. <laughs> and I did nothing except do everything possible to make my life as hard as possible, right? During those three years. And it wasn't until I started doing things to make my life easier that my life became easier. And again, of course, I still have challenges, difficulties, all those things. I still have to deal with those things, but it's easier because I've built systems and you know gone through the experiences and everything to make it easier. And again, that's like my mission and you know in life is to show people that you know, it's possible. <laughs> if someone who fell on their head when they were 10 years, 10 years old and can't remember anything can do it, then you can do it here, Capricorn. You have the Queen of Swords, uh, seeing things clearly. So I kind of feel like you are gaining a lot of clarity during Pluto and Aquarius. So for the rest of the next 20 years, I think you could be gaining a lot of clarity and information. With the Queen of Swords, you have the Queen of Swords, clarity, information, definitely a transformation as well. In Pluto and Aquarius, there is no doubt about it. Many of us, I mean, it is like groundbreaking transformation. If I could sum it up in just a few words, uh, Pluto and Aquarius, um, there's going to be major, major changes, um, things that we've never seen before happening. And, you know, you can mark my words, right, over the next 20 years. And it, again, I like, I, I, apparently I need to stress, this is not, it's not going to hap not happen today. And then you have to wait 20 years for this. Over the next 20 years, we are going to see these major changes, things we've never seen before. With the Ten of Swords, you have the Strength card. I feel like you've developed a lot of strength through through difficult endings. And I feel like this is saying, get something for it, right? <laughs> it's like, don't just, you, you know, I, th I feel like you've been through some difficulties here, clearly. And I feel like this is saying you're in this place where there are rewards that you could get um, for going through these things, but you have to go and get the rewards. This could be through inspiring people. This could be through starting a business. It could be through, you know, I think sometimes people go through a lot of difficulties and they don't look at what they gained from those difficulties. And I think if you really examine some of the things you went through, you'll see what you learned and then you can put that into practice. 
with the Ten of Wands, you have the King of Swords. Pretty interesting. It's like you're becoming, you know, I feel like you're gaining a lot of knowledge. I feel like you are kind of, um, and I think people see that, which is probably increasing your value significantly. So pretty uh, interesting reading here. Again, I feel that you're like standing at the edge of a cliff or standing in front of a mountain that you have to climb, but this isn't like a hard mountain. I feel like you've done so much work. You've built the strength up in your legs so much that this is going to be an easy mountain for you to climb. And I feel like it's going to be worth it to whatever this journey you're on is. I mean, here you go. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Capricorn, guess what? This is uh, Jupiter and Taurus. This card says status. I'm telling you right now, I think you could be gaining a lot of status and life in general in multiple areas of life. But again, don't be afraid to climb that mountain. And the mountain, I feel, is not just one thing. I think that all of us are working towards our North Star right now because of Pluto and Aquarius. Aquarius is a star card, right? So we have that like one thing that we want to accomplish or maybe it's your mission. Maybe you need to develop a mission if you don't have one, right? And it could be anything. It doesn't matter um, how big or small it is. I would just start working towards it. You have this convention card. No convention. Convention represents the way things have always been done. Uh, like I said, for you here, Capricorn, I would be following the 80-20 rule. 80% of the time, it's not really the 80-20 rule. It's my 80-20 rule, <laughs> which is 80% of the time I would be doing what works. 20% of the time I would be experimenting with new ideas, new things in all areas of life. You have this acquisition card. Damn, some of you could be attracting a Taurus into your life and it could be like a fancy couple. This is my fancy couple card. It's like my soulmate card. And so definitely, if you're looking for love, it looks like there could be love coming in for you in the near future. Uh, if you're not, again, and even if you are, I definitely see a lot of success here for you in general. Uh, next, you have the flattery card. Yep, uh, like I said, could be a person who's coming in to, who's going to flatter you, <laughs> uh, someone who loves you. You see these two people are facing together. I feel like this is what you've experienced right here is like not the same. You know, people who don't see things the way you do. And now I feel like you're getting closer to people who do. And this is not just in love. I feel like all relationships, you're finding like your tribe. And uh, finally, you have this, um, what does this card say? Concentration, yeah. What I, I think what you think about, you bring about uh, for you at this time for sure. So I would be concentrating on the things that you actually want to see happen in, in your life. And uh, that's all I would be focusing on. But pretty good reading here, Capricorn. I like it. So thank you for being here. Really appreciate it. Make sure to watch your sun, moon, and rising for a full picture of what's going on for you at this time. But thank you and definitely enjoy the next uh, 20 years.